I'll be going through the answers quickly, so make sure your course book is open in front of you, and please stop and rewind the video as you need to. So, got your book open in front of you? Are your answers in capitals? Want to know why the answers are the answers? Then let's go. To get the answer correct for question number one, let's have a look around the gap. Before the gap, we've got a verb. After the gap, we've got a preposition, and then it carries on with the rest of the sentence. We can actually say this sentence without even filling in this gap. Some people live off the food, but this, the word that we need in this gap, actually modifies the phrasal verb to live off something in a way that suggests that they completely live off some, whatever it is that's been talked about here. What's the adverb that we need? Wholly. For question number two, what kind of word do we need here? Well, there are a couple of clues in the sentence that follows. First of all, we've got the example, such as food poisoning. Well, food poisoning is an example of what? Also, afterwards, we've got something being an ex exception rather than the rule. So what is this exception? Both of those clues point towards us needing a noun for this gap. But what kind of noun do we need? Do we need a singular noun or a plural noun? Well, here we've got to have a look at the verb which follows in the sentence, and that verb is are. Are tells us that we need a plural noun, so the answer here is illnesses. Question number three, easy peasy lemon squeezy. Before the gap we've got an adjective, before the adjective we've got an article. We don't have the noun that the adjective is modifying and we don't have the noun to which the article is referring. What's the noun that we need here? Well, because it's an indefinite article, we need a singular noun and the answer is choice. For question number four, if we have a look at the language pattern, it's the verb preposition structure which tells us that we need a noun in for this gap. So to live in what? To live in poverty in this case. For question number five, as easy as they come. Before the gap we've got an article, we don't have the noun to which the article refers. The article is an indefinite article telling us that this has got to be a singular noun. What's the word that we're looking for? Refusal. For question number six, what we need here is an adjective that means the same as increasing or going up. And if we have a look at the stem word, the answer becomes obvious. The answer is rising. For question number seven, once again, we've got to pay particular attention to the wider context. Here, the context tells us that something bad is happening to Freegans. So we need a linker which communicates this message. And as we've met in a number of examples just recently with these kind of exercises, linkers very ten are very often tend to be adverbial forms. So what's the answer we need here? Unfortunately. For question number eight, we've got the structure beforehand in order to. That tells us straight away that we're going to need a verb form of some kind, a bare infinitive. If we have a look at the context, it tells us that it cannot be the positive form. It is not encourage. It has to be the negative form, which is discourage. 